Hi, let's talk about the liver. In this video, we'll discuss the basic structure and features of the liver and gallbladder. The liver is a large intraperitoneal organ that is found in the right hypogastric and epigastric regions of the abdominal pelvic area. It's an accessory organ of digestion, meaning it's not a part of the digestive tract or gut tube, but it does secrete substances into that gut tube. It performs a variety of functions in this vein and in others. Um, it uh, produces and secretes bile for the emulsification of fats. It helps to regulate concentrations of blood glucose. It helps to convert ammonia into urea. It serves as a place to store iron for hemoglobin. It's also part of several processes for helping to filter the blood. And it produces cholesterol and proteins and has a variety of other functions as well. The liver can be looked at um, in terms of its constituent parts, either anatomically or physiologically. Anatomically, there are four lobes to the liver. There is a dominating right lobe and also a rather large left lobe. Um, looking at the visceral surface here, so this would be posterior, this would be anterior, this would be right and left, we can see the very large right lobe there and left lobe there. There is also a caudate lobe, and it's obscured here by the gallbladder, but a quadrate lobe as well. The quadrate lobe is anterior, the caudate lobe is posterior. More often than not, these uh, caudate and quadrate lobes are grouped anatomically with the right lobe when we discuss function in terms of anatomical lobes. When we look at the liver um, physiologically or purely from a, a functional perspective, there are eight different segments that don't fall neatly into these anatomical lobes. And each of these segments are served by independent branches of the hepatic portal vein, the hepatic artery proper, and these two vessels are going to be what sends blood into the liver sinusoids. Um, and each segment is also going to have its own branch of the bile duct. And so bile is going to leave the liver and uh, enter into the, the biliary tree from each of these eight segments. There are <clears throat> five surfaces of the liver. There is a superior surface, which we can see here. That superior surface is in direct contact um, with the diaphragm. Um, opposite the superior surface, there is the inferior surface, uh, most commonly referred to as the visceral surface because it's facing the abdominal viscera. And then there is a right surface. Uh, that right surface is uh, facing right laterally. And a posterior surface of the liver, which is facing posteriorly towards the diaphragm. There are several peritoneal ligaments that are going to anchor the liver in place. Um, most substantially, superiorly here, we have the coronary ligament. The coronary ligament is going to blend into the falciform ligament, which is going to anchor the liver to the diaphragm. We can't see it, but posteriorly there are elements of the coronary ligament as well. And at the edges, those elements of the coronary ligament blend with the triangular ligaments. So there are left and right triangular ligaments. Between these spaces, um, 
there is no peritoneum in contact with the, uh, the liver, and that's what we would refer to as the bare area of the liver. That's more on the posterior surface of the liver. That falciform ligament is going to be riding along the superior edge of the round ligament of the liver. So the falciform and round ligaments of the liver are going to be very closely associated with one another. The round ligament of the liver, or ligamentum teres hepatis, is not to be confused with the round ligament of the uterus. And then we also have elements of the lesser omentum, which are associated with the visceral surface of the liver. So there is the hepatogastric ligament, which attaches the liver to the stomach, and the hepatoduodenal ligament, which is going to attach the liver at the porta hepatis, which we'll discuss on the visceral surface, to the duodenum. So the visceral surface is going to have a lot going on. Most substantially, there is this area called the porta hepatis. So the porta hepatis is going to conduct uh, several major vessels in and out of the liver. So I guess we can begin with um, the elements that are within that hepatoduodenal ligament that are also part of the portal triad. So we have the hepatic portal vein and its tributaries. We also have the hepatic artery proper and its right and left branches. So those two vessels are delivering blood into the liver sinusoids. There's also the bile duct or the uh, common uh, hepatic duct and its branches there. Um, so these are entering and exiting at the porta hepatis. Also along for the ride will be elements of the hepatic nerve plexus. This is an autonomic plexus that is riding in the branches of the hepatic artery proper. And like uh, most things along for the ride, we have lymphatics as well. So we can see um, a few other uh, elements here on this visceral surface. Let's just point out this is posterior and this is anterior. We can also see the gallbladder is associated with the visceral surface here. Um, oftentimes it will be intraperitoneal, but it also may be intrahepatic. So in lab, if you're looking for the gallbladder and you know that your donor has one, meaning it hasn't been removed, you may actually have to look within the, uh, the substance or the parenchyma of the liver to find it. We can also see, and this is more uh, an element of the posterior surface, there's going to be a groove for the vena cava, which is going to hold the inferior vena cava. Um, there's also going to be uh, a groove for the round ligament. And within that will be the round ligament of the liver. That round ligament of the liver is a remnant of the fetal umbilical vein. So this umbilical vein is going to conduct blood from the placenta up to the, uh, the fetus going towards the heart. So it will enter into the hepatic sinusoids there. There is also a bypass for those sinusoids called the ductus venosus in the fetus. Um, it is obliterated in the adult and it's called the ligamentum venosum, which can be found in the, uh, in the groove for the ligamentum venosum on that visceral surface as well. Um, and these are things to, uh, to keep a look at for when you're examining the visceral surface of the liver. We can also see, I mean, just to remind us, there is the right lobe and the left lobe and the caudate lobe and the quadrate lobe, all visible on the visceral surface. It's useful to think about um, the relative physiological relationships of these anatomical structures when we think about the liver. 
And so there are four things going on here that I, I really want to bring together in one slide. So when we think of blood supply to the liver, uh, there are two sources. Uh, the hepatic artery proper, which we can see here being conducted up through what would be the gastroduodenal ligament. So that's going to be a branch of the common hepatic artery from the celiac trunk. And then there's also the hepatic portal vein also going to be transmitted up through that hepatoduodenal ligament. The hepatic portal vein is going to conduct blood from the capillary beds of the gastrointestinal tract up into the liver sinusoids. So portal vein, portal venous vein, uh, I'm sorry, portal venous blood is going to mix with blood from the hepatic artery proper into the liver sinusoids. The sinusoids are then going to be drained through a series of hepatic veins, which are part of the caval system. The caval system includes all of the veins that drain into the superior or inferior vena cavae, which are conducting that blood back up to the right atrium of the heart. And typically there are three of these um, hepatic veins. Separate from all of this are going to be bile canaliculi, so tiny little bile canals, which will coalesce into ducts, which are going to be the proximate portions of the biliary tree or the biliary tract, depending on preference of those who are communicating it. And that biliary tract is going to conduct bile from the liver to and from the gallbladder down to the major duodenal papilla. It uh, coalesces with the main pancreatic duct into the, the hepatopancreatic ampulla, which then is going to secrete through the major uh, uh, duodenal papilla into the second part of the duodenum. This papilla and the secretions represent the division between the foregut and the midgut. So while we're talking about the biliary tree or the biliary tract, we should, uh, we should tip our hats to the gallbladder. The gallbladder is an intraperitoneal organ, although it can be found within the substance of the gallbladder, so it may be intrahepatic. It serves as a storage sac for bile, and it's typically going to appear as green. Um, it's uh, green because bile is more often than not green. It contains two pigments, uh, bilirubin and biliverdin. Biliverdin is the oxidated form of bilirubin, and that is going to impart a green hue to anything that contains it. So the biliary tract may be more green than not, um, and sometimes even the, the parenchym of the liver that surrounds the, the gallbladder may be stained green as well. So we can see the, uh, the gallbladder is drained and filled through the cystic duct. That cystic duct joins with the common hepatic duct, and where the two combine, we have the common bile duct, sometimes just called the bile duct. That uh, gallbladder is supplied with blood from the cystic artery. Now with respect to the autonomic innervation of the liver and gallbladder, uh, the plexus responsible for this is the hepatic plexus, and the hepatic plexus is going to be conducted up to the visceral surface of the liver, um, largely along the branches of the hepatic artery proper. Um, it's going to originate from two sources, uh, the celiac plexus, which we can see here. That celiac um, plexus is a mixed autonomic plexus, which is going to incorporate fibers from the posterior vagal trunk, as well as the thoracic splanchnic nerves. The splanchnic nerves 
synapse in the celiac ganglia. The posterior vagal trunk fibers just pass through them. And these are going to move along the celiac trunk, along the common hepatic artery, out through the hepatic artery proper, up to the liver. There will also be branches from the anterior vagal trunk, and we can see there's the anterior vagal trunk there. And that anterior vagal trunk sends branches to the stomach, but also over to the liver and gallbladder. And there may even be some branches from the superior mesenteric plexus as well. Referred pain from the liver is going to present to either the epigastric region or the right hypochondriac region. So it'll be felt towards the right lateral or central superior portion of the abdomen. So we've discussed the structural and functional divisions of the liver, as well as features of the various surfaces of the liver, in particular, the visceral surface of the liver and in particular the porta hepatis. We've talked about the, um, the various functional and anatomical relationships of these features, as well as the innervation. This is your summary slide. Thank you for your time.